Oh man, did I ever catch a break there? See, so that's pretty good. Yeah, what about that a little bit? Oh, wait a second. Hello, folks. Welcome back. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. And if I seem distracted, it's because I, I am. Um, I'm still working a little bit. For some reason, I got lucky. They chose the higher ups. Thank you so much. Uh, decided to put me on another project. But I got a second chance. And for some reason, I did a lot better the practice ones than I did this time around than I did last time. Some hope? Hope does spring eternal. You never know. I'm not here to talk about that, though. Um, yeah, that's right. I'm here to talk about some AEW. Again, I don't know. I don't have an AEW shirt besides my Bucks of Youth shirt. But yeah, so Bullet Club's close enough. Uh, so let's see here. AEW starts off hot, as it always does. Was there, was there a women's match on? Wait a second. They had no women on. Did they? Or did I do something through it? Oh, yeah, that was terrible. Huh. Yeah. It's like, that's... You know it's a bad sign if you don't remember that there was a women's match on. Enough about that. Let's start off properly. It's a little cult of personality. So we have CM Punk versus Pentagon Jr. This was interesting. This was a unique clash of styles. Um, this is one of those few instances where a clash of styles might actually work. Um, CM Punk who can do everything. Pentagon Jr., who I should be seeing in a few weeks at AAA, Chapter Uno, which I'll be covering live. Um, I am going to be live streaming parts of it, mainly because I don't think AAA cares too much. It did hit with me some Zonkings. Four, but I don't care about the money part yet. I need the, <laughs> I need the viewership first. So yeah, then I can worry about the money. You have to do things in baby steps. Yeah, um, so this was actually pretty good. Again, Cerro Viedo. And it starts off really as a shoving match. They're just trying to show each other. They have the bravado, the machismo to be in the ring. Um, they trade chops for a while. We'll get to trading chops. Probably at the very end though. And then, then a hockey fight starts. A Pentagon. He has a, I didn't, I knew he did the move. He has a good sling blade. You know, the sling blade's something you really shouldn't just use right off the rope, it seems. But when he used it to counter Punk's clotheslines, they just seem to be so much smoother, though. Uh, Punk does his dive off the ring, then, oh, Punk made the mistake of going all El Lucha on him. Uh, what happened was, Punk got to the top of the rope, I think he was going to do like a hurricanrana. Eventually, he did do a hurricanrana. But the thing of it was, these are the ones I hate so much. Yeah, I'll just sit on that for a while. The thing is, Punk's not really made to do hurricanranas, and he's in Louisiana. Louisiana has the same issues that Florida has, especially in that, I don't even think, I don't even think that was a minor league hockey arena. I think that was just like some small convention center. But I'll tell you what, if it's anything like the small things here in Daytona Beach, man, that condensation kicks in. And I think that happened because he took that, he took that, he took a hard fall off the rope. That wasn't planned, and, and as soon as he landed on his knee, I'm like, oh crap, there goes his ACL. Bye-bye, Mr. Punk. We still don't know what's up. I mean, uh, if it's his MCL, it's not as bad. But yeah, when, when I saw that landing, he immediately grabs his leg. The ref jumped in, didn't put up the X. I mean, he might have tweaked something. Might go home and put some ice on it, but you know what? You gotta be careful with that stuff. That's what I did to my knee. Actually, in a wrestling match, too. 
I had a partial tear of my M of my MCL. I knew because it swelled up like my knee, like the side of my knee swelled up to like a baseball size. I'm like, that's not. It, it looked like I had two kneecaps. That's not good. Uh, went went to the orthopedic surgeon literally the next day, and my mom realized like I could not stand on my leg, and that orthopedic surgeon bent that knee and said, "Does this hurt?" I, I sat up, I said, yes, it hurts. That, oh, what he did, probably aggravated it more. I know for a good eight weeks, even on that seven and a half week mark, it still felt kind of gimpy. I tried to walk, I could walk without the brace on the seventh week. First week it was immobilized, seven more weeks with a brace. Um, yeah, seven weeks with a brace. When it got to like seven point when it got to that like weird six and a half week mark, because I was on it for eight weeks, so yeah, that makes sense. At six and a half, I'm like, right, right in the middle of the seventh week, I'm like, I can walk without the brace. I think I tried to do some like really basic wrestling moves, just very simple, like uh, what we would, we would call um, Al Muhammad Ali's, where he just kind of dropped down to a knee quickly and get up. Ooh, I'm like, I I'm not doing that for a while. Purchased myself a knee brace, so I, I really have to do rehab this knee. And still, that whole leg is wonky. They say once you tear something like that, it's never a hundred percent. So yeah, I hope that didn't happen to Punk. Cause that would suck. It's into wrestling to <laughs> to lose to the ropes. It's happened. AJ Styles versus the ropes. Not as bad. All the time here in Daytona Beach, the one thing wrestlers always complain about: those ropes suck. Why are these ropes always wet? Well, condensation, folks. Science. Science. Um, but yeah, after that, Venus in the same. Um, Pentagon was going for the arm breaker. Uh, Punk countered that by a fireman's carry to the Anaconda device. That was good. Then they started to battle it on the apron. They also tended to talk a lot, too. I think Punk was telling in the spots, he's like, I'm going to get the spot. Go in the corner. Like, like, go in the corner at top rope. I mean, you could hear it. That's not good because Punk should nowhere near be what um, John Cena was as far as that goes. He should be well above that. Punk eventually did have, hit a catch GTS, go to sleep. Good match, but that one spot. Ooh. Cheeseburger match. And at the airport, we see Chris Jericho showing up to Louisiana, New Orleans in Louisiana. Yeah, and he got jumped. In fact, LAX stole, stole uh, one of the 2.0 shoes. That's never good. Oh, I forgot those two. That's okay. I'll get them at the end. And the next match we had was Red Dragon versus Jurassic Express. Uh, Jungle Boy with a drop kick. For some reason, the, the joy of seeing Red Dragon and Jurassic Express is gone. Uh, the Dragon School will like whip very classic maneuver by Bobby Fish, the infamous Bobby Fish. Yes, um, on to Luchasaurus, which just jeez, that's a long. You want to talk about a way to hurt someone? Uh, Kyle Riley is, does a running knee. Jungle Boy does the dives twice. He almost missed. Yeah, that <sighs> too many dives. If you're gonna dive, at least make sure you hit the person. Like, just you don't want to pull a bell and just go south. That's not good. Or you don't want to go too far right or too far left. Right, go, right down the middle, just like Bill Alfonso used to say. Uh, let's see here. You know what? Let me take a look at this one. Then we'll get back to this match. Jeez, I hate these. These are the biggest. Conventions are there. Yeah. I feel... I'm not confident, but... Better about that. Oh, that's a Cero! Cero! Miedo! Yeah, because that's just one big long run on the sentence.
Gee, that was easy, folks. Crud. Yeah, I got, I, got, I bought myself 10 minutes though. So that's not too bad. Yeah, you guys can't see what I'm scoring. That's confidential. I'd get fired if I did that. But I can complain and, and, and bitch and, and whine about stuff as much as I feel like that. As long as they get that 70-90 split on both, I'm good. Um, yeah, eventually, someday, after what I saw with Punk and after this, one of these, I thought for sure, someone's just going to hurt themselves tonight. That would bring it down. Uh, Luchasaurus and splashes into the corner of the double clotheslines, that then followed up by the double choke slam. The Jess Express, a double sidewalk slam. Um, elbow combo. Red Dragon, so many double team combos. Even Jared saying, get these guys out of here. I'll say they were within that 10 count for tag team wrestling. I think you get so used to the quicker in and out movement. Even with AAA, like, you don't have to tag, you just jump in. Your partner, for the most part, rolls out, though. One of you have to leave. So, yeah, uh, Red Dragon seems to be in there doing the double teams for a lot. And then Bobby Fish did something off the rope, too. The ropes were not friendly to the wrestlers today. Then it was a spot fest time. Um, yeah, Jurassic Express hit the, hit the Jurassic Express. And Jurassic Express retain, retain his title. Kind of a ham sandwich match. And once you once you start seeing people like almost hurt themselves, like when they, I don't mind if like someone else like potatoed someone. What I don't like about pro wrestling is when they just choose, choose to like dive headfirst into the barricade. They're just like, that's stupid. That doesn't make any sense. But again, the ropes. If, if you know a pro like CM Punk was having issues with the ropes, I want to go near those top ropes. Got to be smart, guys. Got to be smart. Uh, Kyle Ryle eventually jumps Jurassic Express. FTR comes out. Going to shoo them away. Uh, then in the ring, we have Regal with Mox, Yuta, and Daniel Bryan. I think Dan Housen tried to curse Regal. I don't know. Um, Regal's so good at talking. He's a good group representative of whatever Fight Club it is. But the thing with Fight Club, you know what the first rule of Fight Club is? You don't talk about Fight Club. They broke the first rule already. Useless. Um, I mean, MJF versus Captain Sean, Dave, Sean Dean. Oh, yeah, you know how this is going to show up. MJF, he suckers in the captain. He tr couldn't get his jacket off. Eventually, just cold cocks him, takes his jacket off. Zipper never got stuck, laughs at everyone. MJF is such a good heel. Uh, suckers the captain in. Uh, MJF just starts to, to kind of throw some very basic punches to the captain back in the corner then Wardlow then we cut to the back the security is down one of them is missing a shirt one of them pulled a, a hitman move and shows a disguise because then Wardlow comes out ringside he has a face mask on you're like oh I know who that big security guy is security is never that big yep Wardlow came out um, started to beat up security guys distracted MJF MJF, 10 count. Uh, Sean Spears tried to chair shot. Wardlow no sold that. Power bombed him. Started to beat up more security. They had at least 20 security people trying to restrain Wardlow. MJF got counted out by the 10 count. Yeah, they do the 10 count. Only New Japan does the 20, I think. But yeah. MJF loses. Captain Sean Dean wins. Again, the really good setup for the Wardlow MJF match eventually. I'm digging it. Cheeseburger match. And there's the interview with MJF. Wardlow's still wrecking things. 
Wardlow has to be careful though. You don't want to wreck too much equipment. You will have to wind up paying for it though. Then we had a Darby Allen promo again. It's always weird. Um, the uh, House of Black promo. Yeah. Gets a little, little too artsy there. And let's see here. Let me spend. I do have to spend a couple minutes. So I have to get distract myself. I wish I could find something nice and simple where I could like, really compare this to. These are kind of rough. Additionally, no, they don't use any of those terms. Look at that. I should be about right. Over the years, once. That's pretty long. I have to go up there for that. But yeah, I'll let that sit and I'll ponder the mysteries of the universe later. Um, then we had the All LAX versus the Jericho Appreciation Club. It was um, Jericho, Hagar, and the one guy from 2.0. Um, Chris Jericho said, Everyone's number one in my book, baby. Thank you for singing my song so much. You know what? I'll even switch up fingers for that. Can I? Oh, yeah. I have some dexterity. I'd like to thank everyone for singing my song. Ooh, that hurt. That was, that was a stretch. Weird finger stretch there. Um, they trade chops in the ring. Then the three people of the Jericho Appreciation Society decided to go outside start a brawl. So all six men... Fighting two in the ring and four outside. Um, Agar is obviously bigger and stronger than everyone else on LAX. Uh, all I know, Eddie Kingston got in. The ring eventually he was trying to go for the back fist in didn't happen. Uh, Chris Jericho and, and the one guy 2.0 beat up Ortiz. And then the finish was, I think Kingston got nailed with a baseball bat in the back. Judas effect. Lights out. That's the end of that. Jer the Jericho appreciates the society one. Honestly, I had to use the bathroom. So this was a ham sandwich match. Well, another MJF promo tossed in there. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take a wager. That sounds about right. <laughs> I'll find out shortly enough. Um... It's going to milk the clock, get that to the 10 hour, maybe 11 hour mark. We'll see. Um, yeah, because then we had the Maria Shafir versus the Sky Blue Mash. Oh, jeez. Maria, the only, the only cool thing was, is that, oh yeah, we kind of saw Sky Blue's Outer Labia. Always like that down there. Um, Maria did the deadlift pickup. Then she just got put... Larry Sky Blue in the, the leg and arm triangle. I don't know. This was not good. And then we saw Jade Cargill in the back. She was... <laughs> her body said literally matched the background. Like, literally, you see, like, the black... You know how this is, the like, AEW on the side? Yeah, whatever she was wearing said, like, Dallas on it. Like, all you saw was her head and her green hair. And you're like, ah! That was freaky. It's like one of those, like... When those artists, like, they do the body paint of, like, the wall, and, like, all of a sudden you see the wall moving, you're like, ah, the hell's wrong with this? The hell's wrong with me? But yeah, that was freaky. And then all, 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 all of her baddies, I guess, ringside. I'll tell you what, they're just called paid strippers, especially with the outfits they were wearing. You know what? Even with seeing the paid strippers in the audience, being having them pointed out, 
Smash was still a piece of toast. Maria Shafir didn't spend much time in an NXT ring. She probably shouldn't be in an AEW ring on TV. Sky Blue says cannon fodder. So who cares? Then we had Scroll P.O. Sky, all ego Ethan Page, and Dan Lambert cutting a promo again. That's always good to see. And then the next match was Oh, bask in his glory. Oh, bask in his glory. Keith Lee and Isaiah Swerve, Swerve Strickland. This is new name. It used to be Isaiah Swerve Scott. Now it's, a, now it's Swerve Strickland taking on Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks. Hometown boy Ricky Starks. That's good. And they are changing things up too, which is nice. Um, both Hobbs and Ricky kind of work over the arm of Isaiah Strickland. Again, Strickland's the person, very very, very tag team formulaic. He's the one who's going to get beat up. Um, good fast movement by Ricky Starks and, and uh, Swerve Strickland. Can't complain. Ricky Starks is pretty good. I'm just surprised they haven't done more with that FTW championship than they have. But uh, Lee, no sells the chops that Ricky Starks delivered. Makes sense. Lee eventually the the. The loser's a double magnum, the double slap to the chest of Ricky Starks. Ricky Starks collapses. Um, Swerve hit a moonsault off. So Keith Lee is pretty big. He's, his chest is above the ropes. Swerve Strickland, Keith Lee just went, yep, right here. Swerve Strickland went from rope to chest to moonsault. Using another human individual as a launching platform is pretty tricky. They did this pretty good, though. Uh, Lee again with all the tackles, the headbutt. Can he, he used Hobbs as a weapon against against Starks? That was great. Swerve again comes in for a spot. There was a low drop kick again. Ricky Starks is smart. If you're gonna take out the bigger guy, you always go for the leg. You hit the uh, basement drop kick onto Lee. And then it just became a pounce fest. That was so fun. Um, eventually, Starks hit the spot. Swerve hit a four. Yeah, Swerve hit a four fifty to break up the pin. And Taz shows up. Beat me if you can. Survive if I let you. And I better score that now. But yeah. I haven't given. Have you ever heard? Ooh. That's different. Uh, this is going to be weird. Not many ones. Oh, well, I'll start off. I don't know. Here's the hoping. If not, at least I'll get. Oh, I got my 10 hours in. 10 hours at 15, 75 an hour is pretty good. So, Taz, again, they use the belt. Um, so Taz shows up, they use the belt, they cold cock, I think, Keith Lee, and then Team Taz wins, I'll tell you what, it was good use of everyone from Team Taz, surf and turf match. Okay, then we have Thunder Rosa. Um, Nyla brought, brought her a cake for the show shorts women's reigns. Nyla, bad idea bringing a cake out. You bring out cake, get, guess where that? Guess where the cake goes? Well, it goes on your face. So they fight a little bit. We had uh, Adam Page and Adam Cole, baby! Boom! Package. Then we had Samoa Joe versus Minoru Suzuki. And wow, all the chops. That hurt. They just said, and I know Suzuki's old. He's not going to be doing flying stuff. Samoa Joe could probably take it. Samoa Joe probably had a big smile on his face. It's like, finally, I get Minoru Suzuki. And Minoru Suzuki's probably smiling. said, finally, I get Samoa Joe. 
for the most part, this was just a chop fest. Um, some heavy strikes. The shoulder tackle gets gets Suzuki down. Eventually, Samoa Joe does set up Minoru Suzuki with the muscle buster. Samoa Joe wins. He is now the Ring of Honor. <coughs> I can't do the English voice too much. It dries my throat out. He is now the Ring of Honor television champion. Samoa Joe wins. Cheeseburger match. So for the most part, I'm on time. Um, I think there's one more show to do this week. I probably won't be doing anything Friday. You never know. Saturday, I don't know what I feel like doing Saturday night. I might do that. We'll see what I do Saturday night, because they, they're having the Battle of the Belt Saturday night. I don't know if I'm going to watch that or not. I m might make predictions for it. I doubt it. 